Uh, last week, I told you the story of um, a journalist with Harper derangement syndrome. I mean, well, he used to be a journalist. He's much more a commentator now. But more disturbingly, this is a man that trains journalists. I'm talking about Tony Berman. And you'll remember the column that he wrote in the Toronto Red Star that had people fuming, at least people that, that see Stephen Harper as something less than the threat put forward by ISIS. But that was, that was the premise of his headline. Take a look at this star headline, why Harper and friends are a bigger threat than ISIS. And he went on in, in the column to say, after all, the formula is simple, wildly exaggerate the actual threat, inflame the rhetoric, blame Muslims, brush aside issues of human rights and strap in while the vo votes flow your way. He went on to link Stephen Harper, David Cameron of Great Britain and Tony Abbott of Australia to ISIS as well, saying all three of them are worse than ISIS. He said, it serves the interest of political leaders such as Harper, Cameron, Abbott to stoke fears about the Islamist threat. It allows them to evade more genuine challenges to their leadership and too often their nation's news media serve as an unofficial echo chamber for their claims. Does anyone actually think that the, the media in this country is an echo chamber for Stephen Harper? You know it's not true, I know it's not true, and my guest knows it's not true. Ray Hurd worked both sides of the political media divide over the years. He joins me now from Toronto via Skype. Ray, uh, you were sitting watching the, uh, the letters to the editor pour in. They still do those at the Toronto Star. And lots of people not too happy with Mr. Berman's column and also that the Star decided that it was worth running. I think an editor may have cocked up there because I've been a journalist in Canada since before you were born, mm -hmm. 1961, and I've been an editor of a major newspaper, and I ran Global. This is the worst story or column I've ever read in Canadian journalism. In one word, it's disgusting. Well, you know, look, as people pointed out in the letters to the editor, you can disagree with Stephen Harper on policy. You can disagree that ISIS is a threat. And Stephen Harper says it very much is. But to say that these elected leaders are more dangerous than people that rape, pillage, blow up historic, culturally significant, religiously significant sites, that's taking it more than a stretch too far. He's a professor of journalism at Ryerson. And I wonder what the dean and the president of Ryerson feel about a guy who accuses Stephen Harper of being worse than ISIS what right he has to teach journalism students our profession, or I prefer to call it a trade, not a profession. Yeah, well, I think it, it leads to a lot of questions of what he will be bringing into the classroom. I mean, his columns are regularly anti-Harper. That's fine. Uh, we all have our biases. But I, don't, I, I would never say that Justin Trudeau and Tom Mulcair are more dangerous than ISIS. I oppose them on policy. I think they're wrong on the issues. That's what Jack Layton used to say he, about Stephen Harper. He'd say, Mr. Harper is wrong on the issues. That's the way that you debate somebody. That's the way you take them on. We've got people complaining, like Margaret Atwood, about uh, the, the ads against Justin Trudeau that end with the throwaway line, nice hair, though. We've got whole columns on that saying, oh, you shouldn't be attacking his hair. Where, where's the outrage over Tony Berman saying Stephen Harper, David Cameron, and and Tony Abbott are worse than ISIS. And his other point, which is significant, he says that terrorism is not a, as big a threat as climate change. Well, guess what just happened on a train in France? Mm -hmm. Three brave Americans and a brave Brit stopped a terrorist from massacring approximately, well, hundreds of people on the train and this, this is one of the biggest stories of the last several years. It shows the terrorist threat is real, A, and B, the only way to stop the terrorists, as Stephen Harper says, is to fight them wherever you can, including in Iraq and Syria, where the Canadians are performing bravely, even though Justin Trudeau and Malcair and Tony Berman are opposed to the mission to wipe out ISIS. I, I, and I don't get this, Ray. I don't, because these are people that will stand up and say, oh, never again. We've got to make sure we don't have another Rwanda. We've got to make sure we don't have uh, another genocide. And yet here we have attempts at that. Um, 
the, the uh, Christian church, 1,500-year-old Christian church bulldozed this past week by ISIS in a town that was once filled with Christians, now cleared out. They, they've blown up the, the cultural uh, artifacts at um, oh, the, the name of the town, Palermo. Going back to the Roman days, yeah. right. And they've blown that up. Yep. They are killing minority communities. They are hurtling gays off of the tops of buildings. And these people are, mm, well, yeah, they're bad guys, but... I mean, we don't want to actually be involved in, in fighting that. I thought that no, when you said Berman, never again, you meant never again. Berman actually is lying because what Berman is saying in the, is that Harper and Cameron and Abbott are hyping the whole thing. It's not that big a threat. Well, you know something, Brian? I will, I will predict this and I hope and pray that I'm wrong in saying this. Before the election is held in roughly two months' time, just under two months' time, I bet you that in North America, in Canada or the United States, there will be a, an action of terrorism which will probably result in Harper winning even more easily than I think he's going to win now. And Berman is putting all his cards in one deck by assuming wrongly that terrorism is not a threat to the people and the interests of Canada. Let me ask you this, Ray. Um, do you think that Tony Berman d hasn't noticed that the, um, the person sitting at uh, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in the White House, the person who is in, you know, all essence, is heading up this coalition that's fighting ISIS, do you think that he didn't notice or chose to leave out of his column because it made for better copy in his mind, to attack conservatives. Do you think he didn't notice that Barack Obama is a liberal Democrat? Yes, I, I think he knows that, but he doesn't want to admit it. I have never been more angry about anything I've read. As I said earlier, anything I've read in all my years in Canadian journalism, nothing has made me madder than this. And I nearly used, and I've never used them, obscenities on Twitter to express my anger, but I haven't done that. All right. The... Um you know, the one that comes to mind uh, from several years back, it, it actually looks tame by comparison now. And I'm thinking of Heather Malik talking about uh, uh, Sarah Palin and a pig and lipstick and things like that. That was pretty vile, but I, I think comparing elected leaders to, uh, to murdering terrorists is worse. Well, Heather Malice, as I call her, her name is Heather Malik. Um, she's a controversialist. Her worst column, and Jonathan Kay did a nice rebuttal in the National Post. Her worst column was describing Rob Ford as the kind of guy a woman wakes up with after a one-night stand. She got away with that. Now, in my generation of journalism, Brian, mm -hmm. the editors imposed limits. If you were to use the sexual analogies Heather Malice try, uses all the time, gets away with it, that would have been... The editor would have called you and said, look, that's going too far. This newspaper has certain principles which we respect, and we don't like using sexual analogies, in her case, that are wrong. All the evidence shows that Ford loves his wife. He's done some other bad things with Coke, perhaps. But mm. Berman knows that Harper and Abbott and David Cameron, he knows they are not worse than ISIS. So when a, journalism makes a, a journalist makes a statement, it should be based on knowledge and fact. You, you can have analogies, you can have metaphors, Brian, but you must use ones that are appropriate and are not damnable lies, as was Tony Berman's column yeah. about Harper being worse than ISIS. And if I had made that up, no one would believe me. If, if I would said, when I started off in journalism, one day I'll see in the Toronto Star a columnist comparing the Prime Minister of Canada to the most despicable terrorist since the modern wave of terrorism started many years ago. Yeah, no one would believe you. As one of the letter writers in the Toronto Star pointed out, uh, you can't compare people to Hitler. That is out of bounds now, but apparently... This is not. And uh, good on the, all those letter writers for calling shame on the star. Ray, thanks for talking to us. We'll chat soon. Thank you, Brian.